Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I examine what could be done with Super Heavy in its current state. So Super Heavy and Starship with 29 engines on Super Heavy and the normal complement of engines on Starship. And we are assuming the latest available stats that I know of, uh, though they might have upgraded the engines. So for the Raptor engines currently we have uh, 2060 kilonewtons in vacuum for the sea levels and then for the vacuum engines we have, that's the vacuum, we have uh, 2065 kilonewtons so it's possible that they have uh, more power in which case we can switch to the max configuration here or the hypothetical max uh, is 230 tons of thrust each and the hypothetical is with uh, increased chamber pressure beyond that. So, but we're setting a lower bounds. This is the least that could be done. And the setup here is nine engines total in the center and 20 on the outside for 29 there. And I don't have fins down here because they didn't have fins so far. Uh, we do have the grid fins up there after we get up a bit. Uh, the grip fins are going to be extended right from the start. And then, of course, here we have the three vacuum, three sea level, in that configuration as you see there. Now, for the payload, and you can see the current load of Starship, it is underfueled, though, uh, to 80%. And the Super Heavy is also underfueled to 80% uh, to compensate for the fact that we don't have uh, the engine power. So for our payload, that's what we're testing. How much payload can we carry? This is actually the crude version, so it has the decks in there as well. But the payload I've put is uh, two tanks, 30 tons apiece. And it's just liquid oxygen right now. I should probably lock that, but it won't have any effect because it'd be imbalanced. So uh, in other words, it's not gonna fuel the engines to any degree. But 30 tons each, so that's 60 tons of complement. And we will see how we do. So again, lower bounds for what could be done. So obviously we should be launching from Boca Chica, but we're at Cape Canaveral and I think the scenery would be nice. So we'll just go ahead from here. Uh, the issues here, I mean, obviously if we just take a look at the Delta V, we have enough. But the issues here are we are intending to reserve fuel in the first stage for the return of the first stage and we'll reserve about 10% uh, for its return. And so taking a look at the two minutes and 40 seconds that we have there, that means that we are reserving 16 seconds. And on the upper stage, we need to reserve enough for return as well. So re-entry and the ultimate landing. As far as actually landing it is concerned, well, that's complicated. We'll have to see about that. I'll talk about that once we get to orbit. Ignition. Uh, no launch clamps, we're just taking straight off here. And you saw off the pad we were about 4,000 tons. Currently only the center nine engines gimbal. So we're past the speed of sound. Every looking everything looking fine so far. Okay, getting ready for shutdown and reserving that. Right an app lapse is of hundred kilometers. Hmm? Okay, and it continues. Okay, we have rolled around. So I've left some gimbling on the vacuum engines to simulate the differential thrust if they use it, if they use that. I'm personally not in favor of using the RCS to control the whole thing. Uh, while the engines are running, of course. When the engines aren't running, that's fine, but... Anyway, shutting off the sea levels. We only have vacuums. 
Okay, and shutdown. 233 by 196, let's call it. Well, 234, whatever. However you want to round it. We are in orbit with 966 meters per second left. I think that's probably enough to come back down and land. Uh, I don't know exactly how much Delta V they intend to use for the final touchdown, but at least on the successful test, they needed to burn the engines for a fair amount of time. Not 30 seconds, of course. So we're probably overdoing it. I'll try and bring up a somewhat heavier payload to see what would really max out, assuming you just wanted re-entry. You know, that wouldn't be great, but maybe we could get it down to like 500 meters per second and 15 seconds. Uh, we had 60 tons of payload. Let's try 75 tons and see what happens. So increasing these to... Oh, we don't want them to poke out. Um, 37.5 tons apiece. Delta V reading from Mechjeb says we've lost about 200 meters per second, it says. But of course, we've also decreased our thrust to weight ratio off the ground. So we'll have to see what effect that has. Okay, here we go again. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. Okay, getting ready for the reserved fuel and shut down. We went a little bit steeper. Okay, a lot steeper. Well, we'll see how that works out for us. So as far as re-entry is concerned, the problem I have is that the fins don't really actuate that the way that they would need to. Well, I've got them moving in the right way, it's just that as far as Kerbal controls go, they don't do the thing. So for instance, if I deploy, actually this one should be inverted and removed from symmetry and that one not need to be reverted. But anyway, that's because of the way I place them. Um, so, it, you know, these can go like that and they could probably have an increased deploy angle up to 68% you can see or 68 degrees sorry uh, so we can do that but it doesn't actually do that to control the pitch yaw or roll or anything like that so when I when I try and do pitch yaw and roll it doesn't move them so that's the problem I'm having right now how do I get these fins and the ones in front as well, which also have that deployability, except that one has to be inverted. Uh, how do I get them to do what they're supposed to do on re-entry? That's problem number one. Problem number two is that I the, the way it re-enters is still not wonderful. I tested it out during a live stream, and I, I can't say I completely understood... I didn't understand at all what was going on with it, so... A shuttle, it is not. Let's put it that way. Uh, it ultimately survived, but that, that was more due to the limitations of Kerbal in that the whole body has the same heat shielding all the way around. It's not the bottom surface with the tiles is not separate from the upper surface. Otherwise, it would have been cooked. But those are that's the situation right now with this as far as re-entry is concerned. Okay, shutting off the sea levels. Okay, here we go. And... So, uh, 232 by 187. We've got 500 meters per second left. So, let's see what happens if we come back down with this. So, 75 tons. And, you know, it depends on what you think the dry mass of this ought to be. Anyway, I'm going to drain the liquid oxygen payload and then we'll see what we have actually. Okay, so without any of the payload, well except for the bare tanks, we do still have the bare tanks inside. Uh, 146 tons and we do still have the food, water, and oxygen and nitrogen and all that. Probably not a whole lot as terms of, in terms of actual propellant mass at most 30 tons. So that is what we have. We'll go over to the nighttime side, retro burn, and see what it does. Well, before we do that, I'll 
toggle deploy, I mean, it, I, I don't think it's going to be sufficient, but I'll say toggle deploy for the aft fins there, and toggle deploy for the forward fins there. Obviously, that's not the same as controlling properly. Oh, we need to remove from symmetry. Okay, that's the periapsis we'll go with. Maybe a little bit lower. All right. Let's see about the atmosphere and what it does. I'm pretty sure it's not going to do what I want it to do, but we'll see what happens. Okay, well, this is the orientation we're going to go with. We'll see if it can hold it. I doubt that. Once we hit the atmosphere, I'll turn on the indicators from MechJeb for the center of mass and center of lift. So they are under attitude adjustment. The center of lift wiggles around a lot though. So it's not necessarily the easiest thing to figure out. Right now it's not really showing it. Yeah, it's not really showing it yet. Yep, there it is. Uh oh, it's in front of the center of mass. That would not be good. Not that we have a good way. I guess I could move the liquid oxygen into the tanks that we've emptied. That's certainly, judging from the camera, that certainly is moving the center mass forward. Okay, well, narrowly in front there. <laughs> we'll see how that does. We'll t keep an eye on the pitch authority there as well. Oh, suddenly uh, we hit a lower part of the atmosphere and the center of lift jumped back on us. But I won't adjust things. Though, what I will do is have the tanks pinned up so that I can move stuff if it turns out to be necessary. As far as the header tank goes, I mean, we, we have it physically, if you will. Um, if I can show it very easily, we sort of right, go right through it. But there is a round tank in front. The pro uh, the window is sort of irrelevant to that. But the problem is shifting, you know, simulating the shifting of it since that tank is sort of built into the model instead of a separate part. Oh, it's rolling around a bit. Maybe I shouldn't fizz warp at this point. It's even maxing out the roll. That's not good. It doesn't have much roll authority at all. It would if these fins did stuff, but the fins aren't doing stuff. We're now matching, uh, maxing out pitch suddenly. Um... And it's trying to pull up. So let's see. Okay. Uh, out. No. Out. Uh, it seems tough to get a good balance. Well, it's sort of tenuous, that's for sure. Oh, oh, I tried to rebalance the fuels, but he ultimately flipped all the way around. Will we get back to normal or not? Well, this is not problematic. Well, you see the problem here. Again, this is where the all-around heat shielding does help. It's probably better just to go tail first for the most part now. So I'm going to turn the descent mode on to shift the center of mass to the back and turn smart ASS off for now or go negative on it. This is obviously not the fancy flip maneuver or anything like that. 
I guess we can retract the fins. <laughs> I don't gather that that did anything good for us, though, actually. It, uh, retracting the fins definitely does something. So there is that to be said. But it didn't seem like a good thing. I'll try it again. I mean, it, it seems almost wanting to do the little free fall deal. But this is not the orientation we want for that. It goes to a really slow speed like this. Let me extend the fins again. We end up uh, going faster like this. That seems like the opposite of what should happen. So retract them again. But of course, when they're retracted, we go into this orientation, which exposes uh, there's more of the surface area going against the atmosphere. So we slow down. But shouldn't it be... I don't know. I don't understand. Extend them again. I sort of prefer this because we, we're more decisively retrograde this way. When we're like this, we're going to have to do the engine flip, right? The engines are going to have to flip us onto the tail like this. It's slower. Boy is leaning forward though. But it's almost too slow. Not almost too slow, it really is. Too oh no, no, it's going faster. Maybe it just needs time to readjust. But it's still away from the retrograde vector. Whereas with the fins extended, it's directly on the retrograde vector. I'm not sure it knows what it's doing. Okay, um, ignition. Oh, we're gonna start going up, aren't we? Uh, I need to be able to turn off like all but one engine or something. Are we still on the vacuums? Uh, that could be bad. Oh, we sort of splashed down. Okay, we're gonna be beached whale again. So yeah, that's the situation. It doesn't even want to flop on its belly. Yep. <laughs> Right, so 75 tons seems doable. I mean, they could soft land, I'm sure. I have a little bit more problem. Uh, we didn't have landing legs per se, uh, though that would be included in the mass of the, the dry mass of the body. You can see here we're basically 118 tons if we dump the remaining fuel. 114.5 tons is what we are. So that uh, we are carrying the food bar and oxygen, but you know, factor that in, whatever. Anyway, that is the dry mass that we tested with. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.